Hey, are you editing in Final Cut Pro and you want to blur or pixelate someone's face or maybe some account information or whatever it is, you just don't want it showing up in your video? Well, I'm gonna show you two very easy ways to do that. They're quick, they're fast, and that video is starting right now. <laughs> Everybody. my name is Sean Seymour. I own a photography studio in California and obviously I am not in the photography studio right now but I wanted to share this video with you because I'm making this for you but I'm also making it almost just as much for me as a reminder. I did a video a couple days ago on how to cancel your Apple services, your Apple apps, or app subscriptions on your computer. When I did that, I had some account information that I didn't want showing up, so I needed to blur it out. And it took me quite a bit of time, at least an hour and a half, of searching the internet to figure it out. I found a lot of stuff but I didn't find a clean, clear explanation with all of the features in it. And I'm gonna show you two different ways, which are very quick and fast to do. One of them, I'm gonna show you how to use the sensor effect. I'm gonna show you how you can track that sensor effect through the frame. And then I'm gonna show you how you can use the blur and do the same thing with a shape mask. It's so fast and quick. You don't have to do any cutting, pasting, moving the clip on top, you know, blurring that clip and cropping, none of that stuff. So why don't we go ahead and hop onto the computer and I'm going to show you my way of doing this which is also going to serve as a reminder for me so I don't have to spend an hour and a half next time. Let's say in this particular video clip I want to be able to blur the faces on this moped. I just don't want them to show up in my video and as you can see as I scrub through it you can clearly see who these people are. Dude's checking me out while I'm like selfie sticking myself down the street. I'm going to show you how you can do this tracking something like a moped through the frame. And then I'm also going to show you how, let's say that you don't want things showing up, like maybe I don't want Sarah's name showing up in this image, or in some of these other images, I don't want the file name showing up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur out that area where the file name shows up. Maybe it's a face, maybe it's account information, maybe it's a whole bunch of cats running around in circles. <laughs> So let's start with this clip of the moped that is going behind me while I'm walking down the street. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom into that clip so we can see exactly what I'm doing down here in the timeline. Before I even start, I need to get it in my mind how this moped is moving through the frame and essentially, am I gonna be able to get away with tracking it through the frame in a linear fashion or is it gonna be up and down and changing sizes and all of that? Get that in your head a little bit early so that you know kind of what to do up front before you even start. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay attention to what whether or not this moped moves through the frame and has anything blocking it, like my big fat head right here blocks the moped. Then they pop out on the other side of my head right there. So I'm going to pay attention to that tracking and then I'm going to pay attention to whether or not there's a break somewhere in there where you can't see the person or the thing or whatever it is you're trying to pixelate. What I do is I simply press B for the blade and you can also find that under your tools right here. These are all the shortcuts for the tools that you might use when you're editing. So I'm gonna press B and then I'm going to follow it all the way to right when their faces disappear. And I'm going to blade and then I'm going to come right here before their faces reappear. You want to make sure it's not after their faces appear because you've bladed it too, too late. So you want to make sure that you're blading it right before their faces appear. So then I blade that. Now I've created three different clips. You see that? There's this middle clip that is just them behind my head. Okay, I'm going to use A to go back to my select tool. Once I'm at my select tool, I'm going to go ahead and use what's called sensor. It's in the effects browser, which I'm gonna go ahead and turn on over here. Now, a really quick and fast way to find this is to go ahead and click all and then do a search, call it sensor, and there it is. If you don't wanna search for it, it's under the stylized menu, scroll down a little bit, and there it is. So I'm gonna take that, 
I'm going to drag it right onto that first clip. Now you'll notice that I end up with this giant circle right in the middle of my frame. We're going to change that. First thing I'm going to do is get my sensor the way I want it. I'm going to call this a pixelated circle, by the way. I hate that name, sensor. I'm going to get this pixelated circle the way I want it. So let's drag it over to where the moped is. Let's go ahead and resize it. So there's their faces. And then I want the amount to be dropped down so that it doesn't look so obvious. I think the last thing you want to do is create a huge distraction in your video clip. So making this a gigantic pixelated circle is just going to create a big distraction. I can adjust the radius over here or I can adjust it just by physically adjusting it with my mouse. Now that I've got everything the way I want it, I have to go ahead and hit the keyframe. So I'm gonna keyframe the position that the sensor is in. I'm also going to keyframe the radius and I'll show you why in a second. Next thing I'm gonna do is just scroll through and if you look at this, you'll notice that my little sensor circle or my pixelated circle stays right where it is. Well, I need to change that. Cool thing about Final Cut is I can scrub until I see somewhat of a change in size and a change in their direction. I can go ahead and grab my pixelated circle and bring it up to where they are. And that's still doing a good job of pixelating their faces. And what you'll see when you scrub back over that is it moves along with because when I grabbed it and moved it, Final Cut automatically keyframed that for me, which I personally love because I hate keyframes and I'm not very good at them. So let's go ahead and move forward a little bit more. I'm just going to bring it all the way to here. Now what I need to do here is I need to not only move this pixelated circle, but you can see it's no longer big enough. So I'm going to go ahead and change the radius also to make it slightly larger. And I think that that should follow along with them. Yes, you see that? and then it will stay right there behind my ear and all I can see is the other guy's ear so I mean if you can ID a guy with just his ear okay so that one is done now they disappear behind my head and they begin to come out again on the other side right there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab that sensor again or my pixelated circle and I'm going to drop it on this last clip now if I don't want the sensor circle to survive, I call it, throughout the whole clip, in other words, after they're already gone, this is where you need to use your blade tool. So rather than dropping my sensor yet, I'm gonna go ahead and blade this right to here when they disappear out of the frame. Now I probably should have done this at the very beginning, but because I didn't notice that, I had a lot of extra clip after they're out of the frame. I can go ahead and do that right now. Now I need to block their faces as they come out from behind my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance this to a point where I think both of their heads are popping out. I will click my playhead to move it to there and then I'm going to add this sensor effect again. We'll move the sensor over, drop the amount of pixelation down to where it's reasonable and not distracting, and also drop the radius. Now you have to be careful because this guy is going to fall behind if we're not careful about where our sensor or our pixelated circle starts. So I think I want to start it up a little bit and I don't really want it on my hat. I think that is the size that I can get away with right there. Now what I want to do is I want to start that at the beginning of the clip, but I don't want it to move. Oh, I don't want it to move until they're both in the frame. So right here, I'm going to create my keyframe. So hit center. And since I'm not going to change the radius through this little bit, I don't have to worry about it. I've already made my cut here when they exit the frame so that this is a clean track all the way through. So now I can go ahead and click on the end of that clip. I'll come back one frame and let's go ahead and move our sensor circle over. And what we should see is it begins to start tracking. Whoop, we lost that guy again, darn it. 
Oh, that's because he exits the frame really quick. Undo. I may have to move this with this guy because he's being a pain in the butt. So we're just going to move it as they go. And I believe that should take care of it right there. Oops. There you go. So the keyframing can be a little bit tricky. Play around with it. Now, if we watch this clip all the way through, you'll notice that their faces are completely pixelated and it's really not that distracting if you're looking at my face in this clip. That's one way to use the pixelation circle or the sensor. I'm gonna show you another way by using shape masks and blur that you can do the same thing. Keep in mind that both of these work together, so you could use one or you could use the other depending upon what your preference is. One of the things that I did wanna show you about the sensor is that you have other options up here. You can blur, you can darken, or you can use a rectangle. And if you want, you can also use a shape mask. And I'm gonna show you now how to use a shape mask with the blur effect as we go ahead and use that on this other clip where I wanna hide this file name right here. So as you can see, I'm scrolling through. I've got several pictures that I might wanna show. As I'm showing them, I don't want the file names to show up. Let's just say that's what I want. Maybe it's some personal information. Maybe you have some account information. Whatever the case is, I'm gonna show you how to use a shape mask. Let's go back to this first frame and I'll zoom in again so you can see what I'm doing. I don't need to cut anything because there is no movement here. So all I need to do is go to my effects browser again. And this time I'm going to use the blur. So I click on blur and I'm going to use Gaussian blur. Take that, drag it over to your clip. Now you notice that everything goes blurry. That's perfectly fine. What I want to do now though is I want to use a shape mask to isolate that blur and put it only in one spot. Click on shape mask and add shape mask. You notice now that I get this circle that pops up with a bunch of points in it and there's two circles actually. When I first started with Final Cut I found this to be very confusing. Once I figured it out I found it to be really useful. So let me explain real quick what's going on here. This outer ring is the end of the feathering of your blur. So between the inner ring and the outer ring, there's going to be a feather. If you want it to be a gradual blur from one place to another, that's what you would use. I personally am going to want this blur to be exact. So I'm gonna take this outer ring and just move it closer to the inner ring. And you notice that I have no blur feathering anymore. These points here are pretty obvious. You pull on them and it'll make it bigger or smaller. If you want it to be bigger or smaller in a locked aspect ratio, in other words, if I pull on this and I want the whole circle to get bigger, all I have to do is hold down the shift button and then click and drag. This little handle right here allows you to spin your circle, which is not very useful for a circle, but I'm gonna show you why it's useful. This little guy right here took me forever to figure out and took me forever to locate. This circle right here allows you to change this from a circle to a rectangle or a square. Oh. Do you know how long that took me to figure out? And it's not obvious on YouTube, I don't know why. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this box real quick to match the area that I want blurred out. Now I find that if you do any blurring, you really wanna be precise because it's very distracting for people's eyes to see a blurred area. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And I'll open this up a little bit more. So that might be where I would put my blur, right like this. And that, that is using a shape mask. Now I can change the amount of blur, I can change pretty much everything about the blur, and I can also keyframe this blur. So let's say that in my video, now that I've created this blur, using a shape mask, I want to zoom in to just Sarah and this area here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to put a keyframe down on both position and scale. Now my guess is I'm only gonna need scale on this, but I do it anyway. And then I want it to start zooming in and reach its zoom. So we'll come over here to scale 
We'll bump scale in and I am going to need to use the position and the way I do it is I click on this little transform tool over here and I just drag this window to where I want. Right, maybe I want to show just a little bit of Sarah and the information from the photo. Or maybe I want to show all of Sarah and no information from the photo. Whatever the case may be, once you get it set, here's another trick that I'm going to give you that took me forever to figure out. For whatever reason, Final Cut likes to do things in little flowy, bouncy movements. If you're not into that, you can right click on this little icon right here and change this to linear. That will move it in a straight fashion instead of bouncing. Okay, here's another little final cut thing. As long as I'm on the transform tool, I can no longer scrub using my mouse. So you've got to unclick that, now you can scrub again. And you notice that that works perfect. You also notice because I put that blur on before I put this keyframe in, my blur is resizing and going along with. I don't have to do any keyframing at all, which I find to be very, very helpful. So now I can just go ahead and play this. My blur is gonna stay there no matter which image I'm cycling through. And if you're someone who wants to just hide some personal information or you wanna hide some file names or you just wanna hide whatever, this for me is super awesome. Next, I'm gonna say that if you like what you see here, don't forget that maybe without the, the scaling and the transforming, don't forget you can save this as a preset. So rather than have to come in and do this every single time, if I'm regularly doing this blur right here, I can pre save it as a preset and just drop it in and then resize and I'm done. So don't forget about saving things as a preset also because it makes it super, super fast. Hey, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Like I said, I made this video for you guys, but it's also a reminder for me so that I don't have to spend so much time searching around the internet and figuring out how to do this again. I knew how to do this a while back, forgot how to do it, and then had to go relearn how to do it again. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and that bell notification will give you a notification when I have a new video coming out. In the meantime, blur and pixelate all that inappropriate faces, uh, whatever you wanna do, and keep it simple, my friend. That was a lot of babble, 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 babble. Who ever says that stuff? I totally feel like I'm forgetting something. Blur me. <laughs> Inappropriate behavior, blur it. <laughs>